I'm happy with the response. I'm also happy with the response from Friday. Um, it's uh, it's alright for for me and the staff to to move on in terms of because we're assessing it as we're going and understandable for the players they're in it, and that's a, obviously a big disappointment on Friday for them to move on so quickly and and, and come and perform like they did. Uh, was brilliant, um, and you knew early on that they were they were on it. You knew they were they were there, and then when they scored, we know they're they're very dangerous all across. I think they scored. Uh, 16 goals off crosses this year, so we knew that's where their strength was. And um, unfortunately, I think the ball takes a deflection off Dan, and, and he goes unfinishable. You could see again they were they were really calm. Um, there was no panic, and, and they just got back and took control of the game again. I mean, what was that a slight fear coming? You said it there. Uh, even if you were happy with preparations, that maybe there could have been a slight hangover just from what happened uh, early evening kickoff. Maybe it's a game. Like you're only sometimes might expect you to win, just different to the typical European game. Where there, where there's some elements there to be a little bit worried about before. Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, everything you just said. Um, like I said, it's easy for for me and, and the staff to uh, move on because we're constantly assessing where we are and where it's gone wrong and, and what's gone on. But the players are in it. They give everything uh, to every moment on the pitch. So it takes a lot of you mentally and physically. Um, so that that was the part tonight where you're, you're a little bit worried. Um, you're not worried will they show up? These players always show up. It's just about have they got a are they in tune mentally and physically? And, and um, I, I thought they were brilliant in that regard tonight. I thought they showed real character, real leadership, and and experience that we gained throughout the years came to the fore tonight. It's possible that might be enough. Now I know we've talked about it previously. Everyone's learning about this format. But what what's your sort of message now to the players to how to handle the remaining three games in this group in this competition? Just keep going attacking games. I said up in uh, Larne that um, our, our aim was not to, to uh, get seven points and then just say, OK, pat each other on the back and say it's job done. That was never the aim. Uh, why, why limit what our expectations and what we want from each other? We, we're the ones that have dropped the standards in this country for a long time. And the players continue to do that. You see that tonight. They've done something that's never been done before. But we want to keep going, um, and uh, we understand that you're going to come up against some some really tough teams, and that's European football. But we won't be patting each other on the back and saying, "Right, we have seven points, job done." Everyone switch off. It's not going to be about that. It's going to be about uh, we create history. Now, can we go and push on and, and raise the bar again? It's even a different challenge in the sense that you are uh, you've got weeks off and you don't know, league games before too. So. Talk to me a little bit trying to manage that next two or three periods of free play against yeah. Well, the players will have time off now. Um, how how it looks like it's going to work out is we're going to get a really, really short off-season, so we have to give them time within the games where possible. Um, and this time now, um, we have three weeks, like you say, so I think it's time for them to switch off mentally and physically. Nah, see me or the staff or hear us for quite some time. I'm sure they're sick of that. Um, and just go and be with their family or their friends or whatever they want to do and uh, enjoy themselves. Then we come back and, and it's back into uh, focus mode, get uh, two good games against HAK and then build up to the next European game. And um, Like I said, hopefully we're, we're, uh, we're getting up for European football again after Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. And the game scene and just in terms of dominance that you had, was there frustration that you didn't get a couple more goals? I mean, it's, you know, when you're talking down the European win, obviously, but just in terms of score more goals. Yeah, because like I said about the crosses, you know they're dangerous in, in crossing situations and and they like to play in transition, which you could see tonight as well. And um, mm -hmm. we we controlled the game so much here, just we wanted we needed that tour goal just to completely kill it. Once it's two, uh, two one, sorry, they always feel they're in the game and, and they just need a chance, so they keep that fight. Um, but I thought the players managed it really well. They changed their press second half. Um, and after five minutes, you could see the players worked it out, and, and uh, we came up against that press quite a number of times this year. And um, you could see we worked it out uh, pretty quickly. And, and just like I said, that just that final bit in the second half, we, we could have been more clinical. Yeah, Stephen, um, <clears throat> a couple of things. Um, you mentioned that you know you had to leave aside the penalty decision that went really well have one game against Shelburne. I think there seems to be a sense that you're. You found your form on the way to on the second half of the season, as you tend to do. So, do you think you can grow into this competition and get better, which you may have to do in the next three games? Yeah, just so we're clear, our form had nothing to do with that penalty decision. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, somebody else. Yes. Um, 
our, our form from the second part of the season has been brilliant. But again, the reason I've been so critical of our domestic performance over the course of the season is because we're not a team that performs for half a season. That's not us. That's not our standards. That's not this club. Uh, we show up every day and that's what separates us from, from the rest. And These players have done that for a long time. I understand it takes a lot of you mentally, physically to do that. People have lives, they have things going on in their lives, everyone has problems and then you're asking them to, to be on it every day. So we understand how difficult it is, but um, these players, the second part of the season, have been, have been top class. And, uh, and again, they showed that again tonight. I thought, they were, I should, thought tonight they, they made a, a really tricky game, very, very comfortable. No, I've no doubt. Dylan has a f really, really high football IQ. Um, this year's the fittest he's been. Um, mentally, he's matured. He's respecting all aspects of being a central midfielder. And, uh, and he's one of the very, very few players in this league, probably him and, and uh, maybe Mali from, from Sligo that can, can penetrate all and take the ball all in one movement, you know. It's, it's, uh, it's a unique skill that he has and, and uh, he does it very, very well. So when teams press heavy, he breaks the press quite comfortable for us. But to answer your question, sorry, yeah, I, I don't think he'd look out of, out of place in, in, any, in any international squad. Had there been any kind of contact in terms of like these same, you know, how Grimson was saying he was going to look at players in the last few years? No, 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 nothing. Um, and you said it there about kind of setting the standards in, in the league of Ireland, obviously, over the last number of years. And there was even something that Daniel Fury said yesterday where he was talking about, you know, Milo is important to be only special in Europe. Is that something that you try to relate to the player yourself, even over the last number of years, especially with the support of the Martin in the middle? Yeah, it is, and, and again, Mary, that's why we work, work so closely with Mary, because it's about understanding where we are right now and what we're doing. We will never, ever get it again. We will never get these moments again. We will never get this group again, because things change, people move. Um, and they're a special group. Um, we're, we're a special group together. Um, so you've got to cherish the, these moments, and you've got you to cherish the, the good times and the bad times as well, because... Um, they're the ones that make you stronger and make you better. Um, but these are uh, they're a special group of men. Like I said, they've dropped the standards for for a long, long time. They, it's not just one year, and then they filtered away. It's it's been five. I think we've been competing for the league. I could be wrong here. Six or seven years. That's that takes that takes a lot. Um, and uh, and these players have done that. And, and what I love about them is they just it's on to the next challenge, on to the next challenge. And, um, and that, that has to uh, be our mentality going forward. You said earlier that you don't want players to think that it's job done. Uh, but is seven, do you think seven points is enough for a top 24 and every seat up where I think it's 97% um, for playoffs, seven points. But like I said, we want to go and qualify automatically. I think we'll have a better idea after the late games this evening. Um, I hope it's enough. but. If it's not, it's not. We'll, uh, like I said, we've three games to go and get points on the board. Um, we'll do everything possible to, to try and make that happen. We, again, we know we're going to be against good teams. But, uh, we've played against top teams before, and, and the aim is going to be can we go and get points and qualify automatically? Is the second half a bigger challenge that you're not rolling into games that you're kind of like in an offseason long time? Yeah, it'd be definitely different. It'd be new, and like I said, we. We'll have to make a decision on pre-season in terms of do we play any games, do we play many games. Um, and that's something that we'll have to make as a staff because like I said, we, we usually have four weeks in the gym and then you have four to five weeks on the pitch or vice versa. And this year we'll probably get three and a half, maybe all in. So, And, and it's, it's I can turn around and say, yeah, we're back and we play loads of games. You have to think of them, them players in there that that, uh, like I said, put their bodies on the line and, and cross the white line and perform. It's easy to say, but it's, it's, it's hard to do. And, and so we gotta, we got to really get that bit right. we got to get the, 
we really got to look at the loads and think right what's best to, to get us ready for for European football early early next year. Just, um, was it an unusually difficult pitch to play on tonight? Yeah, it is cutting up. Um, look, I, I can never complain about the pitch here. I, th I think Billy's given us an incredible surface to go and play on. So I definitely, if, if we have one bad night, I'll take it. But I think, look, we're in November and uh, the pitch is lovely and soft underneath for the players in terms of they get real fear for it. But then when you can see when they twist or turn that it's, it's cutting up. But like I said, it's uh, one thing we can't complain at this club is, is the standard of pitch that we play in every week. Sorry, the, I know probably the money side of things isn't your playing with Sunday, but do you already, are you already looking at January and thinking, you know, I can improve this squad and get a few players with this money or the knockouts? Yeah, well, we've been having ongoing uh, talks with, with uh, John Martin and, and Kieran uh, Medler. Uh, regarding the budget for, for uh, quite some time, obviously then the board need to sit and talk about things, but does European football help us? Do I want to keep pushing for us? Do I think we need to keep pushing the needle? Yeah, of course I do. I think the time you stand still, you're done. Um, but to be fair again, the club and the board and, and uh, have been good. There's, uh, they've backed us, we've performed and, uh, and obviously done well in Europe. Um, yeah, and then discussions will, will be ongoing between now and, and, and January in terms of uh, what can we spend, where can we spend it. But we won't just spend just to spend, obviously. We, we've always been very calculating who we've gone after and, and what we bring into the group. And, uh, and that'll be the same. We have targets and, uh, and the work is already starting on targets. And, and hopefully over the next, I don't know, four or five weeks that we can, we can start getting some of them in the door. Obviously, seven points and increased sentiment in terms of Irish sides in Europe. Probably see a drill to the next 24 as well. Um, where would you kind of rank this in terms of what you've achieved with the, with the team so far? Well, we create history tonight, and, and regardless of what, um, regardless of what people's opinions are of, of us as a team, us as a club, me as a manager, you, you, you can't rewrite the history books. You can't. Uh, as much as some people might want to, you can't do it. And, and these players have created history tonight. And hopefully teams, more League of Ireland teams come after us and do the same. Uh, but these are the first group to do it, which is special. Um, but uh, I keep saying it's not seven points. We didn't pin seven points up in the dressing room and then say when we get that, we'll all pat each other on the back and have a good Christmas. That's that's not the focus, you know. It's, it's, um, it's seven points, gave us a great platform. And, and let's attack the next games and let's see where it takes us. Exactly, just uh, obviously joining any support again tonight. Is there any update on kind of what his future looks like in terms of obviously he's going back to Celtic because he's going to be staying here for three years? And then discussions are ongoing with ourselves and Celtic. Like I said, Celtic are in the driving seat, they call the shots, wherever they say it goes. It's as simple as that. But we have a really good relationship um, at every at every level with Celtic. and. Um, I think Celtic are quite clear on my feelings uh, and what needs to happen. But again, um, we need to, all parties will need to sit down and, and, and Johnny included, obviously, and make a plan that we all agree on. But if you're asking me, would I want them back here next year? I think, uh, yeah, that's quite straightforward, of course. Would. He's, he's finished tonight, he sums them up. They're, they're sent to half. Um, the right side thinks Davis is a good defender and he was getting to Johnny. Yeah, uh, but Johnny takes a so quick left foot, top corner. It's uh, there's not many in the league that can finish like that, left or right foot, you know.